For the first time in 34 years, the world is about to get a look at a new stealth bomber. And I don't know about you guys, but I wanna go. Let's talk about the B-21 Raider and why it's unveiling this December is a very big deal. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. So I've been traveling lately and I already had an episode locked and loaded based on an interview I did with Lockheed Martin about their new AGM-179 Jagum, or Joint Air-to-Ground Missile, which will not only replace both the Longbow and Romeo Hellfire missiles, but eventually even the Maverick and Tow missiles as well. But then Northrop had to go and announce that they would be unveiling the B-21 Raider to the public in the first week of December later this year. And, well, that's too big a deal to ignore. So here I am rushing to get this episode out to you guys tomorrow, and we'll do the Jagum next week. If you're not already familiar with the Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider, it's America's next stealth bomber, which began development back in 2015 under the unassuming name Long Range Strike Bomber. It has since, however, served as a clinic in secrecy in this modern era. Despite there being a high-resolution camera in just about every pocket these days, not a single image of the B-21 has found its way onto the internet over seven years of development and with six test model aircraft already nearing completion. This new stealth bomber builds on the success of its legendary precursor, the Northrop B-2 Spirit, but it's said to leverage stealth technology that's at least two generations ahead of America's long-serving flying wing. That in itself is a pretty significant claim, because despite being in service for a quarter century already, the B-2 is still touted as among the stealthiest platforms in the world. This announcement that the B-21 Raider will officially be unveiled to the public in the first week of December in the same Palmdale, California plant as the B-2 is literally historic. This'll be just the second time in history that a stealth bomber will be unveiled to the public, and if it lives up to the hype, it just may be as significant a leap in capability as the B-2 was more than three decades ago. On November 22, 1988, the massive hangar doors of Northrop's Palmdale Assembly Plant 42 cracked open to a chorus of cheering spectators. As daylight enveloped this sleek black mass inside, an aircraft unlike any before it slowly took shape, flanked on either side by security guards with dogs. This 172-foot-wide platform did bear a striking resemblance to flying wings developed throughout aviation history. From the BICH series of test planes the Soviets were using in the 1920s to Northrop's own YB-49 in the 1940s. But this shadowy jet leveraged that inherently unstable flying wing design to entirely new ends. Secretary of the Air Force at the time, Edward Aldridge Jr., probably said it best when he said, We're not just rolling out America's newest strategic bomber, we're ushering in a new age of strategic deterrence. Early experiments with flying wings were really all about aerodynamic efficiency. A flying wing doesn't have things like vertical tail surfaces, which provide stability at the expense of increased drag. But because it's a flying wing without a fuselage, the wing itself had to be pretty thick or tall, enough to accommodate passengers and equipment inside. That, of course, doesn't lend itself well to aerodynamic efficiency. And that, along with a few other reasons, led to the flying wing sort of falling out of favor for a while. And despite entering service with a nearly 7,000-mile unrefueled range, the B-2's sleek design wasn't really about fuel efficiency. It was really purpose-built to defeat the most advanced and capable air defense systems in the world by leveraging a new technology known as stealth. And you've got to remember what a mind-blower this had to be at the time. 
No one in the world by this point in 1988, other than people within the defense apparatus and spies, had ever seen a stealth aircraft before. The U.S. government had only acknowledged the existence of stealth as a concept eight years earlier. And although the F-117 entered service in 1983 and was acknowledged for the first time the same month the B-2 was unveiled, the world wouldn't get a good look at it until April of 1990. As the B-2 was unveiled to the public, the press and crowd gathered were kept 200 feet away from the bomber, facing its nose. They weren't even allowed to see what the back of this new stealth bomber looked like. There were just such pressing concerns that the Soviet Union would find a way to copy its technology. In fact, at the time, the Air Force Secretary we mentioned before, Edward Aldridge, told the Washington Post that if he had his way, he would never let the Soviets get any closer than that. 200 feet was plenty. There were just real pressing concerns that the Soviet Union would find a way to copy this technology. Of course, today, 34 years later, we know that America has managed to maintain its monopoly on heavy payload stealth bombers, but that lead is beginning to wane. Not only do both China and Russia have stealth bomber programs headed for service, I'd expect China's to reach the sky before Russia's, but new air defense systems and advanced detection technologies like modern multi-static radar arrays have begun to erode the advantage provided by existing low-observable aircraft. So for the first time in more than three decades, America needs a new stealth bomber to maintain its competitive edge. And in the first week of December, it'll get its first look at exactly that. The B-21 Raider will also resemble flying wings found throughout history, but like the spirit before it, the Raider's simplistic-looking shape hides a technologically significant leap in battlefield capability. The Raider is expected to be smaller than the B-2, which boasts a payload capacity of around 60,000 pounds. Common estimates place the B-21 Raider's payload capacity at around 30,000 pounds. But what it lacks in size, it will make up for in both volume and discretion. And by discretion, I mean that the B-21 may be the stealthiest aircraft ever to fly when it enters service later this decade. The Raider benefits from more than 30 years' worth of advancement in stealth design since the B-2 first started flying, and that allows for a more streamlined and effective shape that's capable of wicking away enemy efforts to both detect and target the bomber. And that's an important distinction. That improvement is really possible because of how stealth came about and has matured since. You may already know that the basic premise behind stealth was really born out of the work of a Soviet physicist and mathematician with a name I will now butcher, Pyotr Ufimitsev. My bad pronunciations notwithstanding, his 40-page paper called Method of Edge Waves in the Physical Theory of Diffraction, translated by the Air Force Foreign Technology Division in September of 1971, really drew little attention within his own country. But that Air Force translation found its way into the hands of the Skunk Works in-house mathematician and radar specialist, Dennis Overholser, which, for all I know, I may have also mispronounced. While Ufimitsev is often credited as the father of stealth because of his work, it was really Overholzer who figured out how to apply that work into a mathematical equation that could calculate the radar cross-section of a three-dimensional aircraft design. And that's really what opened the door to developing stealth aircraft, because it made it possible to calculate an aircraft's radar cross-section before you built it. But as a lot of you already know, math is hard, and the complexity of a radar deflecting design was still tough to manage, even with the advent of computers. The jagged angles of the hopeless diamond and the F-117 Nighthawk that it bore were the result of this difficult compromise between stealth calculations and aerodynamic requirements. Northrop, who competed with Lockheed for that F-117 contract and lost, didn't give up on their stealth ambitions. They rolled the lessons they learned in the process into a new platform that would eventually offer a huge leap in capability over even Lockheed's Nighthawk. 
Rapid leaps in computing power made it possible to create sleek stealth designs, leveraging the same calculations but on much smaller scale. Today, that compromise between stealth and aerodynamics is less pronounced as a result, and the B-21 represents the latest development in this steadily improving marriage of design concepts. The results of these advancements are really easy to see in modern stealth fighters, like the F-35 and the F-22. But it might surprise some of you to learn that the B-2 is actually harder to detect than either of these fighters, and the B-21 will be even better. That may seem counterintuitive. After all, the B-2 first flew in 1989, which was 16 years before the F-22 entered service and 26 years before the F-35 reached initial operating capability. And while both of these stealth fighters are practically without peer in terms of overall stealth against other fighters, the B-2 remains harder to detect and track than either of those jets, and the B-21 Raider can leverage the same advantage, which really is born out of its flying wing shape. Now, a few weeks back, we published a whole video about why stealth fighters are fairly easy to detect and track using low-frequency radar arrays, but they're not easy to target using high-frequency fire control radars. If this sort of stuff strikes your fancy, I'd recommend watching the whole video, but I'll summarize it really quickly here. As we're all aware, stealth designs minimize an aircraft's radar return, delaying or sometimes even preventing detection. But because of the aerobatic performance required of fighters, jets like the F-35 have to include things like vertical tail surfaces for maneuverability, stability, and control. These facets of fighter design can be optimized to limit their detectability against high-frequency radar arrays that are good for targeting weapons, but they still tend to produce a resonance that can be read as a return by low-frequency radar arrays that don't have the image fidelity required to actually guide a weapon to a target. In fact, it's not even uncommon for air traffic control radar to spot stealth fighters on their scopes, even when they're flying without radar reflectors or external fuel tanks or munitions. Stealth bombers, on the other hand, like the B-2 Spirit and B-21 Raider, don't need to be able to perform those high-G stunts that you'd expect out of a fighter, and that means they can skip common facets of fighter designs, like a tail section. As a result, these stealthy flying wings are not only really tough to target using those high-frequency fire control radars, but they're also practically invisible to those low-frequency early warning radars as well. But the shape of the B-21 Raider isn't the only facet of its stealth design to benefit from decades' worth of improvement. Because as people who've been watching this channel for a while know, radar-absorbing materials are a big part of how effective a stealth aircraft really is. Now, this is another topic that we have a full video delving into, so I'll be quick. But the radar-absorbing materials, or RAM, leveraged by today's stealth aircraft is really effective. It's rated to absorb upwards of 70 to 80 percent of inbound electromagnetic energy, or radar waves. But it's also really expensive, time-consuming to maintain, and susceptible to damage when exposed to things like heat, water, or salt. Developments in RAM technology are among the most closely guarded secrets in the defense technology world, but there is evidence to suggest that Northrop Grumman has been making continued strides in this realm over the past 30 years. In 2004, they announced that they'd start coding America's B-2 fleet with a new RAM coding that they dubbed Alternate High Frequency Material, or AHFM. This new RAM eliminated the need for about 3,000 feet of RAM tape that had to be applied to the aircraft after each maintenance cycle, offering the same radar-absorbing performance while reducing maintenance requirements. But they clearly weren't done there. In 2017, Northrop Grumman was awarded $35.8 million to build a new coatings facility at that same Palmdale plant in which the B-21 is now being built. The contract and Northrop's releases at the time didn't mention the bomber by name, but by 2021, they were being less shy about advancements in their coating process. While they didn't discuss any potential improvements to its ability to absorb energy, Northrop's vice president of the strike division 
agent Steve Sullivan, was clear that the material leveraged for the new bomber would be a big improvement over the B-2. I'll quote him here. Through the application of lessons learned on B-2 and other stealth aircraft, and the use of digital engineering techniques, not only do we have a design that has significantly improved over the B-2 from both a survivability and aero performance perspective, we also now have a coding system that is as revolutionary in its maintainability as the original B-2 systems were in their stealth performance. Now, we've talked about in previous videos recent advances in ceramic-based RAM coatings, which are said to absorb upwards of 90% of electromagnetic energy and could be a huge development in stealth aviation. In 2020, a North Carolina State University team received a contract from the Air Force Office of Scientific Research to continue development on their ceramic RAM concept, but it seems unlikely that that tech will find its way into the B-21 so quickly. However, Northrop has been tied to similar efforts dating all the way back to 2012, when Popular Science associated their next bomber effort with a Ceno Technologies program trying to field a similar form of ceramic-based RAM called Cenospheres, which could be covered in different kinds of materials to allow you to tune your RAM to specific radar frequencies. Now, there's no guarantee that this Ceno Technologies RAM would have found its way onto the B-21, but it's clear that Northrop was consistently working on finding ways to improve these incredibly important coatings. And it's all but certain that we'll see that in the B-21. In the latter half of the 20th century, the U.S. emerged as the global leader in air power, from high-performing fighters like the F-15 and F-16 to extremely stealthy bombers like the B-2 Spirit. Now, as the B-21 cruises towards service, it'll be the first of a new bevy of advanced platforms that are soon to fill American hangars. The B-21 Raider will enter service sometime in the mid-2020s, followed by the Air Force's next-generation air dominance fighter in the mid-2030s and the Navy's FAXX fighter shortly after that. The Raider isn't just going to replace the B-2 Spirit, it'll also replace the supersonic heavy payload B-1B Lancer. And it'll be able to do that because the Air Force intends to buy more than 100 of these bombers. That's five times the quantity of B-2s ever delivered. And considering the B-21 Raider has consistently been reported as on time and on budget, this is one stealth program that may actually see its deliveries meet projections. In a real way, the unveiling of the B-21 Raider is as exciting today as the unveiling of its predecessor all the way back in 1988. Like the B-2, this new bomber could change how America approaches airborne warfare. It can complicate the combat calculus potential opponents have to address when challenging the United States, and it could raise the bar in terms of what stealth can accomplish, both in terms of deterrence and combat capability. Ability. But unlike the B-2's unveiling all those years ago, I'm all grown up now. So, hey, Northrop Grumman, I know this unveiling is an invite-only event, so what's a guy gonna do to get an invite? I volunteer as tribute! If any of you guys watching know, feel free to hit me up. And on that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below, and don't forget to leave a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.